Hey guys, welcome to Amy's Autopsy Report. My name's Amy. Um, this is going to kick off um, Amy's Christmas of Horrors 2017. I did this last year and I, I actually didn't do that many movies, but I got such a good response. I wasn't going to do it this year, but I got such a good response um, from last year that I decided, okay, we'll do it again. And Rocco, come here. Get over here. It never fails. Every time I want to start a video, he wants to, like, fight with the cats and stuff. Um, so, anyway, I wasn't going to do it this year, but everyone kind of, people were like, yeah, you should do it. I liked it. And and so I thought, okay, let's do it again. And uh, last year I started at the beginning of December. This year I'm starting today. So, first up on Amy's Christmas of Horrors, if you're new to the channel, um, I, I just did reviews of all Christmas horror movies last year around this time, and um, it was a lot of fun. I had a blast with it. It kind of helped me. Christmas is not really my favorite holiday, so it was kind of cool. Rocco, stop it. Lay down. Oh my gosh. Why do the kids, like, have to, like, act up? Um, so it kind of was helpful for me, uh, too. It kind of got me through the Christmas season. Um, all right, so the first one we're going to do is a new movie that just came out, and it is called Red Christmas. And it stars Dee Wallace, directed by Craig Anderson. Um, this uh, is an artsploitation film's release. And this release is actually pretty cool because it comes with, the disc has disc art in it. It actually also has a reversible sleeve, if you can see that, which is very cool. Um, I had pretty high hopes for this because it was an arts exploitation release, um, and typically uh, they put out pretty good stuff. So, gave this, this one a watch last night, um, and let's get into the review. So, first of all, the, the main plot of this, the basic plot, I should say, is... Uh, it starts out at a protest, and the protest is for, um, uh, like, abortion, anti-abortion, that kind of a protest, and, and, and it cuts then to 20 years later. Um, Dee Wallace plays a mother of this family, and the kids are all grown, and she's having them to this house that seems to be out in the middle of nowhere, um, all of them back for Christmas. So, look, the flaming Hot Cheetos are still there. I gotta get some coffee, guys. It's morning. I'm getting ready to go to work, and I was gonna try to film this before I left. So, they all gather at this house, and then a visitor shows up, and he's kind of all in this cloak. His face is covered with these, like, wraps, and he arrives at the house. And the he he has this uh, letter with him, and he and it says mother on it and he he gets to their house d wallace's character invites him in meanwhile the whole family's kind of fighting because they're like all these different sort of eclectic characters within the family um and uh he comes in and he wants to read this letter that is uh, just says mother on it so he starts reading the letter d wallace completely freaks out about it kicks him out um, and she's just upset that somebody's, you know, on Christmas, at the Christmas season, somebody's, like, showing up to her house to protest, like, uh, uh, abortion rights and this and that. And you get the idea that she was at that protest 20 years prior. So that's the basic plot of the story. Um, things I liked about this movie. Dee Wallace's acting was excellent, as always. Um, this, this movie had a really good story to it. Um, they, it was, it looked to me like they used all practical effects. I enjoyed that. There were a couple of really great kills in this movie. Um, and <clears throat> the way they filmed it, they did a lot of filming with different colors. So they filmed a lot of it with red lighting and with green lighting. Um, it really gave you somewhat of a Christmassy vibe to it. Um, let's see, what else did I like about it? It had a lot of redeeming qualities about it. Um, I'm not sure if if uh, Craig Anderson has directed other things. I, I did not really look him up. Um, 
So let's move on to the things I did not like about this movie. This movie definitely had some flaws. Um, while I enjoyed a lot of the shooting style, the static shots that were real low angle, I always enjoy those shots. Um, I enjoyed the lighting, how they had different colors going. There were a couple things about the filming. There seemed to be a lot of unnecessary handheld work. And I'm not sure why. Um, I know that Sometimes when you have conversations going between characters in a movie, some people want to do this back and forth handheld motion. So you're, it's on one character and then it goes to the next one and then it goes back. Well, that's great if you've got a great camera operator and it's kind of warranted. The, the rest of the time, it just kind of is there and I'm not sure why people use that. Um, whoever did the camera work um, for the, those scenes where it was handheld, it was not good. It was all over the place. It looked very sloppy. Um, I had a problem with that. Even on some shots that they wanted to be static, um, you could see that the camera was still moving a little bit. And I don't know why, but that really bugged me. I'm not, I'm guessing a lot of people won't notice that. Um, the next kind of thing I disliked about this movie was that it had a lot of talking. The killer was great. But he talked all the time, and that was annoying, and I don't really typically like when the killer of the movie is talking a bunch. It, it's way creepier if they don't talk. Ah, coffee. Um, he did have his face cover the majority of the movie. You do see it, his face at one point. Um, and the talking is kind of explained later. I don't want to go into a bunch of details in case people want to watch this. Um, there were also some times when it was a little bit boring. It's almost like the editing wasn't quick enough to obtain that suspense that you need. Um, and then this this last sort of the last sort of thing uh, I'm gonna kind of steal from Kyle Horror Junkies 509. How Christmassy was it? I don't know where they filmed this. It was clearly filmed in a place that was not cold because there was no snow. Nobody, you know, you can't see anybody breathing outside. You can't see their breath in the air. But at one point, Dee Wallace is like, oh, come in, get out of the cold. But she's got like short sleeves and a skirt on. And, and this guy's like wrapped in all these cloaks. So you would think she would be the cold one, not him. Um, how Christmassy was it? It kind of went back and forth. Um, I think what they were trying to go for was the Christmassy vibe that Krampus has. Um, it did not really succeed in that. It does feel Christmassy um, here and there, but overall, like it's kind of like it's thrown in there and it almost adds a reminder to it. Um, overall, I'm kind of glad I have this one in my collection simply for Dee Wallace's performance and a couple of the really good kills. If it were not for those and Dee Wallace, I would give this a two out of five. I think that a lot of people are probably not going to like this movie. Um, with Dee Wallace and the kills, I'm going to give it a three out of five. Red Christmas, I say red box it or rent it or stream it unless you are a Christmas horror junkie like myself. Um, like I said, I'm happy to have this in the collection because I love Dee Wallace, but um, I would suggest most people rent it before you buy it. Um, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Amy's Christmases. Amy's Christmases. Whoa, the coffee. Amy's Christmas of Horrors 2017 starts today. Um, hope you like this video. Give me a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram at Amy's Autopsy Report, and I will catch you guys in the next one.